So it's, it's international now. So if I go to Lima, Peru, and I'm in a hotel, and here's a guy playing all trains, licks, and lobby, you know? So it's a worldwide thing now. It's not just American. So what does that say? It means we have to work harder. But that's why Sonny Rollins, as you mentioned, and Coltrane got to be so successful. They worked harder than everybody else. You know, Coltrane practiced 25 hours a day. <laughs> it's only 24, right? And, and when we were in a hotel in uh, San Francisco, and Train was practicing in the hotel, of course, in his room. And somebody calls on him, hey, tell that guy to stop all that noise with that music, that saxophone up there. The train took the horn out of his mouth and practiced fingering for an hour. to 1967. John Coltrane was an acclaimed American saxophonist, bandleader and composer, becoming an iconic figure of jazz in the 20th century with albums like Giant Steps, My Favorite Things and A Love Supreme. Who was John Coltrane? During the 1940s and 50s, John Coltrane developed his craft as a saxophonist and composer, working with famed musicians slash bandleaders Dizzy Gillespie, Duke Ellington, and Miles Davis. 
Coltrane turned the jazz world on its head with technically marvelous, innovative playing that was thrillingly dense and fluid in its understanding of the genre. His virtuosity and vision could be heard on the now-revered album's Giant Steps, My Favorite Things and A Love Supreme, among others. He died from liver cancer at 40 years old on July 17, 1967, in Huntington, Long Island, New York. In 1943, he too moved north, specifically to Philadelphia, to make a go of it as a musician. For a short time Coltrane studied at the Ornstein School of Music. But with the country in the throes of war, he was called to duty and enlisted in the Navy. During his service, Coltrane was stationed in Hawaii and regularly performed and made his first recording with a quartet of fellow sailors. Joining Dizzy Gillespie and Duke Ellington. Upon his return to civilian life in the summer of 1946, Coltrane landed back in Philadelphia, where he studied at the Granoff School of Music and proceeded to hook up with a number of jazz bands. One of the earliest was a group led by Eddie Cleanhead Vinson, for whom Coltrane switched over to tenor sax. He later joined Jimmy Heath's band, where Coltrane began to fully explore his experimental side. Then in the fall of 1949 he signed on with a big band led by famed trumpeter Gillespie, remaining with the group for the next year and a half. Coltrane had started to earn a name for himself. But during the 1950s, as was the case with other jazz performers, he began to use drugs, mainly heroin. His talent earned him gigs, but, his addictions ended them prematurely. exact impetus for Coltrane finally getting sober isn't certain, but the saxophonist finally kicked his drug habit. He worked with pianist Thelonious Monk for several months while also developing as a band leader and solo recording artist, heralded by the release of albums like Blue Train, 1957, and Soul Train, 1958. At the start of a new decade, Coltrane made his debut on Atlantic Records with the groundbreaking Giant Steps, 1960, penning all of the material himself. By this time, Coltrane had nurtured a distinctive sound defined in part by an ability to play several notes at once amid wondrous cascades of scales, dubbed in 1958 by critic Ira Jeitler as a sheets of sound technique. Coltrane reportedly described it this way, I start in the middle of a sentence and move both directions at once. several years Coltrane was lauded, and, to a smaller degree, criticized, for his sound. 
His albums from this period included Duke Ellington and John Coltrane, 1963, Impressions, 1963, and Live at Birdland, 1964. A Love Supreme A Love Supreme, 1965, is arguably Coltrane's most globally acclaimed record. The succinct, four-sweet album, a big seller that went gold decades later, along with My Favorite Things, is noted not only for Coltrane's astounding technical vision but for its nuanced spiritual explorations and ultimate transcendence. The work was nominated for two Grammys and is considered a hallmark album by jazz historians around the world. A voracious reader noted for his gentleness, Coltrane had an immense impact on the music world. He revolutionized jazz with his innovative, demanding techniques while showing a deep reverence for sounds from other locales that included Africa, Latin America, the Far East and South Asia. Having received a 1981 Grammy posthumously for the live recording Bye Bye Blackbird, in 1992 Coltrane was given the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award as well with an array of unearthed recordings and reissues released in the years since his death. In 2007, the Pulitzer Prize Board also awarded the musician a special posthumous citation. Coltrane's work continues to be an integral part of the sonic landscape and a major inspiration for newer generations of artists.